Now, the OSI reference model is a great starting point for understanding some basic functionality that happens when like a user goes out to a website and some of the logic that has to happen. Now, <laughs> here's the here's the challenge. And I wish somebody back in the 80s when I first got involved with networking was very direct with me about this and they weren't. But here's the deal. We don't use in production the OSI reference model because it's just a model. It's not a real protocol. So what we can do, though, is we can use a real protocol like the TCP IP protocol suite, and we can compare and contrast that with the OSI reference model because many of those same functions from the model, from the OSI reference model, also exist in the real IP protocols that we use today. So this represents here the actual OSI reference model, which I'm going to put here as an idea. And then this represents the TCP IP protocol stack, which is real, that we use today. Now I've got some great news. All the functionality from the application layer and presentation layer and session layer, they just combined into one big chunk that's now called the application layer. So if you see documentation that is talking about layer seven or application layer, what they're really referring to is this green section here in the TCP IP protocol stack. And we may ask, what are some examples of application layer services that we may use? And they would include things like web browsing. It may include things such as file services or printing, which would be an example of print services or streaming services. And the list goes on. There's a very long list of various applications or services that we might want to use from our computer, from our PC. So right out of the gate, the actual real protocol stack called TCP IP just has one layer here called the application layer that represents layer seven, six, and five from the OSI reference model. Also, more good news at layer four, the transport layer, that's identical to the functionality in the OSI reference model. But in the world of TCP IP, we actually have real protocols that implement that, including protocols like TCP, which is considered to be a reliable protocol. It does sequencing and acknowledgments, making sure that the PC and the site, the website we're going to, to make sure we're not dropping any data. And if we are using TCP and we drop some data, we can go ahead and resend it to make sure that both parties get all the data that was expected from each other. We also in the TCP IP protocol stack have an example of a protocol that doesn't care about reliability, and that would be UDP, User Datagram Protocol. And these are actual implementations or protocols that are really used that represent the functionality of the transport layer. And as we go down this TCP IP protocol stack, we have the internet layer, which corresponds to layer three, the network layer. And that provides the responsibility of adding the addresses. For example, the street and house number, which in an IP network would be referred to as the IP address. And then for these bottom two of the OSI reference model, those are combined into one called the network access layer. So anything dealing with the type of envelope to use or including the mailbox slot number or the actual physical sending of the data that's all lumped together in the grouping called network access in the TCP IP protocol suite. And now for the kicker, I'm going to share with you something that I wish somebody had shared with me back in the 1980s when I was first working with this. And that is this. Even though we are literally using the TCP IP protocol suite, we mix and mash a little bit some of the terminology from the OSI reference model with the actual TCP IP protocol stack or suite of protocols that we use today. And that works out to look like this right here. So at the application layer, we have application layer services, which include web browsing streaming, file services, print services, things that a user at their computer wants to go ahead and consume or get over the network. At layer four, it's transport all the way across the board. And then when we get down to layer three, that's when we start borrowing some of the terminology. So even though the TCP IP protocol stack, this suite of protocols is referring to this layer, layer three as internet, we actually borrow the name and we call it network. And then as we continue to go down, even though we're literally using the TCP IP protocol stack, we have logically broken up these bottom two layers to use the same numbers for layers two and layer one and the same names as the OSI reference model. So this actual is kind of a hybrid approach, which boils down to this. We're using the literal TCP IP protocol stack, but we're borrowing some of the numbers and names from the OSI reference model just to be clear when we're describing and working with the protocol. So this, my friend, is a representation of the protocol stack we use with IP today, which has borrowed some numbers and names from the OSI reference model, but it is literally the protocols that we use today on the internet. So what you and I get to do in the upcoming content here is we're gonna take some specific time on each of these layers in the TCP IP protocol suite, including the application layer, transport layer, network layer, and data link to reinforce both the concepts and also give you some concrete examples of what they do. 
So in the very next clip, we'll focus our attention at the application layer of the TCPAP protocol suite.